Hello everybody, this is a video about rational numbers. I am your host Mr. Shirley. Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go! Please make a note as you're going through this video. Um, again, rational numbers is the title. Throw a date on there. And what we'll be doing is analyzing the definition of a rational number and then considering some different ways of expressing them. Okay, you use rational numbers all the time. You probably just don't really think about them quite the way we're going to during this video here. All right, so a rational number, yes, you should write this stuff down, but I'm going to underline a few things as we go. So a rational number, it's any number that can be expressed in the form of a fraction of two integers. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a second. So, but the important is this integers um, in a fraction and the denominator cannot be zero. Okay, you can't divide by zero. We've talked about this before. There's funny memes on it and everything, but don't divide by zero. So, um, just as an example, uh, the number 1.5 is rational because it could be written as 3 over 2. So that's a fraction of 3, 3 over 2 or 3 divided by 2. Okay, and that would get you right back to 1.5. It's worth noting it could also be written as 6 over 4, um, 9 over 6. There are many ways that you could write a number that will get you 1.5. Okay, but again, because it's, it can be expressed as a fraction of two integers, it's rational. Okay, and yes, there are irrational numbers, uh, but we're not going to talk about those too much during the, this. We'll talk about it just a little bit at the end. Okay, so rational numbers aren't usually expressed as mis mixed fractions, although you can. Typically, they'd just be written as an improper fraction. All right. Now, rational numbers can be expressed in many different ways, like I just mentioned. So, negative 0 0.5 could be written as negative 1 over 2. Uh, it could be written as negative 2 over 4. It could be written as 2 over negative 4. I think you kind of see where I'm going with this. Um, there's many different ways to express them. Okay, and really, anytime you get a fraction, you can always find a potentially an infinite number of equivalent ones. Okay, now, um, this is just a bit of a recap because some of the work that you need to do is um, related to these rational numbers involves a little bit with fractions and decimals. Okay, so I'm just going to do a fast recap of that to help you through the work for the week. Okay, so... Uh, we did this back in our fractions unit, but remember going fractions to decimals, this is the easy one. Take the numerator divided by the denominator. Okay, so that would be 0 0.4. Um, 8 divided by 7 is 1 decimal, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1. Repeating, I'm sure you all had that memorized. Um, but remember, the point of um, the rational number is that it can be expressed as a fraction of... Um, of two integers, okay? So even though the number looks bizarre, it can be expressed that way. So any repeating decimal counts, I'm just going to write this here because it seems like a good spot to do it. Um, sorry for the writing. So repeating decimals would fit, okay? Any non-repeating decimals as well. So of course, non-repeating decimals, just as we, and non-repeating. Um, but naturally any um, whole number or um, whole number integer uh, or fraction is clearly rational already, just kind of by definition. Okay, but any repeating decimal can be expressed as a fraction. It's sometimes hard to figure out what it is, but it can be expressed that way. And non-repeating decimals are easy, and we're going to talk about that in, on the next slide. Okay, so quick review of non-repeating decimals to fractions um, is that you place the, dec the numbers to the right of the decimal as the numerator. Okay, so in this case, that's the 7. And the denominator is a 1 followed by as many zeros as there are digits uh, to the right of the 0. So in this case, it would be 7 over 10. Because there's one digit to the right of the 0, there's one zero. Sorry, to the right of the decimal place. That should say decimal place. Let's just make a little change on that. Decimal place. Yikes, that's some messy writing. Okay, decimal place. 
Okay, so because we have one digit to the right of the decimal place, 7 over 10. All right, now 0 0.25. Um, because So we've got two digits there, so 25 will be the top. And then the bottom will be 100 because we've got two digits to the right of that decimal. It's 25 over 100, which reduces to 1 over 4. I guess I didn't say it, but you should be reducing to lowest terms if you can. Okay, and the last one down here, 0 0.64, uh, because there are three digits to the right of that decimal point, that would become your um, the top, and 1,000 would be the bottom again. Three digits there, so three zeros, and that reduces to 8 over 125. Okay, so just to get us started here, um, so write a rational number for a loss of $3.25. Um, so that could be written as negative 3.25. Okay, now we have to express negative 3.25 as a fraction. Okay, and there's a few different ways of approaching that one. Um, but basically what we're going to do is convert that. Again, we're, we're just using what we did on the last slide. Because there are two digits to the right of the decimal. We put the two zeros on the bottom, so we have negative 325 over 100, okay, which can be reduced to negative 13 over 4. Now, it's very important here that the, uh, the negative sign stays either on the top or on the bottom or out in front, but doesn't go to both. Okay, so just as a quick example here, if I were to put it on both the top and the bottom, so negative 325 over negative 100, well, that equals positive 13 over 4. That doesn't equal negative 13 over 4, and now, we're, now we've got a completely different number than we had to start with because it's lost the negative sign. Okay, so it either has to stay with only the top, only the bottom, or it needs to stay sort of out in front. Okay, like this. Now, when you're in math courses, what you're typically going to see is either this way where it's sticking out in front or this way where it's applied only on the top. You'll rarely see it just go on the bottom. It's not wrong, but you'll rarely see it. My personal preference is this one right here, so that's the one I'll stick to. Um, but again, just make sure you're only sticking it uh, to one of those spots. Now, it appears that I neglected to actually include a sign on what an irrational number would be, or sorry, a slide on what an irrational number would be. There aren't nearly as, sorry, I shouldn't say there aren't that many of them. There's an infinite number of irrational numbers. They are just a little trickier to find and use. Most numbers you will be using are rational numbers. Okay, so the irrational numbers are less common. There's a few exceptions to that. For example, pi is an irrational number, okay, because it goes on forever and is non-repeating. So non-repeating decimal, that's infinite. Okay, another example of this is the square root of 2. No, you don't need to memorize that. If you're going to memorize one of these, memorize pi as an irrational number. Um, but certain square root numbers also will end up as irrational because it's not possible to express them as a fraction of integers. Okay, so pi cannot be expressed as a fraction of integers. Okay, there's very smart mathematical people who have proven this, um, and you're welcome to try as well if you'd like. Okay, so I'm going to end my video there. Please ask me any questions as you go through the homework, and uh, we'll talk a bit more about these during our meetings. Thank you very much for listening.